Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be turning a diamond painting pen using a piece of acrylic that I poured using uh, color changing resin or color changing powders from uh, Michaels. These change in the sun, so after I'm done, I'll go ahead and take it outside and you guys can see it change colors. But uh, I went ahead with this one. It has uh, aluminum honeycomb in it, as well as two different colors of solar powders. And I added a little glow powder to each one of those color swirls. Poured it into some clear. So it gives, so hopefully, once it's all turned, you'll be able to see almost like a uh, floating clouds or stained glass kind of look to it. But uh, let's get started. Okay, now that I've rounded it off, we can kind of get an idea of what we want to do. And I don't know if the camera will pick up on this, but uh, you can see the problem with aluminum honeycomb is you lose adhesion sometimes with it. Like right here, you can see a little chip of the acrylic just didn't bond real well to the uh, honeycomb. And a lot of times these little chips will pop out on me and I'll have to uh, either fill it with super glue or turn past it. I'll just be turning past that piece. But uh, I think looking at the way this is coming out, I think I'm gonna do something. I think I'll put a ring in the middle of it. Just one. Just give it a little something extra and then I'll be able to leave a little bit more of this honeycomb. Let's see what happens. Now I take a pair of calipers or dividers when I'm doing this and I just mark a couple marks, get my idea of a center line That way I know where the middle is. Helps keep everything equal. Now this, this is just a diamond carbide tool. And uh, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just make a bead right in the middle. And that'll be my starting point where I start to do my shape. Now I've defined the bead. Now I'm gonna come back in with my round carbide tool and shape the rest of this.
my tool's not cutting real well, so I'm going to go ahead and put on a new bit. And you'll see the big difference if I can find any bits. That changing the bit out makes when cutting acrylic. Because this one's probably done about 30 diamond painting pounds, so it's about time. And I save these and I resharpen them a little bit for when I'm doing things like true stone. Maybe I'll be turning some antler shells or bone. And I use the resharpened ones on those. But acrylic really likes a sharp bit and especially when I'm turning with honeycomb because the honeycomb can tend to uh, be a little harsh on the bits. That looks pretty good. I don't see any spots where I'm gonna have to fill in. A little bit of sanding I need to do right there. I think I'll come back and see if I can clean that up with my tool. Time to get the sand. Okay, I have my sanding bucket all set up here. And uh, I sand at a relatively low speed. Uh, my screen here, I got a new lathe now. Tells me what speed I'm, sand I'm doing things at. It's uh, about 650 RPM. And uh, I know some of the pen turners out there are probably watching me going, why are you starting out at 150 grit sandpaper? Well, unlike ink pens, where you have a relatively short, very rigid piece to sand, acrylic tends to be a little bit on the chattery side. Especially when you're getting into the middle here. So, it's just a little easier to sand through all the different grits rather than trying to sand out a uh, chatter marks or uh, a chip or a tear out with a higher grit sandpaper. And I go wet all the way through with uh, the sandpaper because I'll use the sandpaper, same sandpaper to sand eight or nine DP pens as I'm making them throughout the day, depending on uh, the materials I'm using that day. Hybrids tend to clog it up a lot faster. Certain acrylics sand better. Things like Rhino, Acrylester, they don't clog up the sandpaper and they rinse out real well. Now, Lumilite, that's just what this is, tends to be a little bit on the uh, cloggy side. This is the first one, so it's not too bad. I'm gonna stop it. 
see any chip out. No low grip scratches. Now after I sand this up to a thousand, I'm gonna put a CA finish on it. Now, some people say you don't have to put a CA finish on uh, aluminum, but I wanna save your hands from touching the aluminum because you can feel it. There is a texture that you'll be able to feel where it is at the surface. Even at a thousand grit or buffed up to a high shine. Plus, it just gives it that little bit of added protection and a higher gloss than I can get by buffing. Not to mention the aluminum turns my buffing wheel black. And then I have to deal with dirty buffing wheel, gotta clean off every pen I buff for the next three or four days with alcohol. It's this whole thing. So it's easier just to put a couple coats of CA finish on it and call it a day. out of the way dry this off you guys will get to see my version of CA finish everybody does it their own way this is my way I've been doing it for about four years the same exact way after I kind of got my way down I uh, saw another person on YouTube that did it this way. Take a blue shop towel, and it has to be the blue shop towels. Fold it up to a little tube. Start with thin. Low speed your lathe will run at, at least for me, without changing the speeds. Apply that first coat thin. Cut off the end. And we're gonna move on to a medium. Uh, this says stick fast, but it's actually, I've refilled it with uh, this brand, Easy Bond. I actually found I like Easy Bond quite a lot. They have uh, several different viscosities of each thin, medium, thick, which is kind of nice. I have some super thick on the way, which I'm excited about. I think it's basically a gel super glue. But I'm gonna put a couple coats of thin. We follow it up with some activator spray. And this is the only activator spray I use. I've tried some of the others. I've tried, I got mercury last time. Wasn't a big fan of how it sprayed. Seems to spray real slow. I feel like I'm using too much of it. And depending on what I'm finishing with CA is how many coats I put on. If I'm doing a hybrid with pine cones in it, I do a lot more coats of CA because I want to build up a nice layer over top of any of the imperfections in the pine cones. Now this is a this is the thick. And I'm going to do two coats of the thick. And this is a nice thick. It's uh, has a nice long working time with it. So you can kind of make sure you don't have any high spots. Or... 
before you hit it with the activator. That's probably good. I'll do one more coat of the medium. And that just smooths out the finish because this is kind of a thin medium that I'm using. Finish it off with some activator. And then I come in it's dry. Hit it one more time. This is 600 grit sandpaper. And I just hit it real lightly. Take off any of the ridges from the application. You can feel them as you're sanding. Don't press real hard or you will sand through your finish. And then I go to the 800. And these are fresh pieces of sandpaper, so they're pretty sharp. Cuts through the CA fairly quick. And we come in with 1,000. And this is automotive wet dry sandpaper. These are from the rolls for turning they have a fabric back, so they don't deteriorate like if you use an actual sandpaper. So there's that. 2000 grit. I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit to about 1500 RPM. Because this is more of a polishing than it is a sanding at 2,000 grit. And this is 3,000. In case you're wondering, I rate the grit on the back of each piece of sandpaper. So I don't get it mixed up. It's so nothing's worse than getting up to a thousand grit and realizing that you had just grabbed the 150 instead of the 800 <laughs> and then you have to start all over so just dry that off That looks pretty good. And I'll be able to buff this back up to a high shine. And I'll come right back and we'll take it outside and I'll show you a color change. Here it is all shined up. And before I take it outside, I'll show you one last little secret. If you're doing uh, clear and you have a hole or something that you need to kind of hide but you want it to be clear and you don't want to paint it here's what you do q-tips i keep a box of these in the shop all the time i usually see they got paint on them from me painting the inside of uh, pen blanks and you take a little bit of thin ca and you just wet the tip of your q-tip now I fling it real hard to get that drip off because I just want it just damp with CA. And you take it, you paint the inside of your hole with it. And that just kind of hides that shadow you get a little bit better than uh, not doing anything. So. 
little tip for you. Here it is all buffed up, nice and shiny. I'm gonna walk out into the sun and you'll be able to see the color change pretty much instantly. Now I cannot see anything on my phone screen right now, so I'm hoping it looks good when I edit this. <laughs> And once it changes colors, it'll stay for a few minutes and then it'll slowly change back into its uh, non color change color. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Well, I'll put some beauty shots of this at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, do all that YouTuber stuff they tell you to do, you know. And uh, if you guys like it, let me know. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to see. That kind of stuff. And don't mind the mess in the background of my shop. It always looks like this.